Anthony Ferraro, and Mancina, two blind guys collide to bring you Four Bad Eyes Podcast. Welcome back. Here we go. Four Bad Eyes. Dan Mancina. Anthony Ferraro. Two rad guys with four bad eyes. In the studio for the last time of the weekend. That's it. This is wrapping up the weekend. Before we make it remotely. And then we'll be doing it from each other's. You know we got the hot cocoa going right now. Yeah, Dan spilt it on the way in. Just... I ran right into my TV that's mounted on the wall and just <laughs> splashed cocoa everywhere with two cups in my hand. I actually hit my head on that TV the first day I was here. Yep, because uh, it's uh, you can your arms can slip right through the sides and then you just take it right to the face, dude. Right to the face. Yeah, some of those just blind moments, dude. You just miss those things right in front of your face. <laughs> yeah, I mean, got to get ready for judo, dude. It's, it's also hard. It's so hard keeping things level as a blind person. Level. No striking? <laughs> no I will always spill like bowls of soup or when I'm carrying like sometimes hot liquids to the back to the table. It's just it's the hardest task. I don't know why. It's super hard, dude. Um, cause it, yeah, I don't know. It's a very visual thing. Watching your your the liquid go back and forth in your cup. Yeah, you good with all those notifications on your laptop? <laughs> you hear them go off. <laughs> I'm focused. It's got his voiceover going crazy on his laptop Let right me, now. Oh, you can hear it through the. It's no, cool. no, I just know you're working on something over there. And we are good though. And uh, sorry, we're good. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't want to lose another episode. No, we have had to scratch so many, and things have been crazy, mm-hmm. man. It's it's been a process, but we're we're still going strong. You got to keep pushing through everything. Keep All pushing, the much adversity. Love, one love. <laughs> but uh i kind of wanted to get right into asking you about something today about you know because i just got married and we were talking about role models the other day and people kind of that inspired you through you know being blind and kind of helped you know things were going to be all right you know what i mean mm-hmm. and for me since i just got married in like a couple years you know first, kid, kids might be down the road first year is the hardest <laughs> kids kids you know are definitely in the plans probably in a couple years and I just seeing you as a, a blind dad kind of really inspires me and I know a few other blind dads and it's just really motivating to me it kind of gives me that hope you know like everything's gonna be all right did you always feel like oh it's gonna hashtag blind why are you a little nervous dude I, being a blind it's you know it's just it it's different you know you're not gonna be able to drive your kid it, oh every but, everybody's no nervous about a kid I guess no matter what but but put blindness in the mix. Like, how am I going to find my kid if he runs? You know, like, all these different things. Like, did those things go through your head when you were you having just a tie kid? a leash to him, dude. <laughs> you know, you ever seen those leashes yeah. for kids? Yeah. Uh, my baby mama's grandma bought us one of those when, we, when our kid was born. Like, so you what? did use one of those? <laughs> no. <we didn't. laughs> She's like, this might help. I wasn't blind then, though. Really? All right. I so was just heard. I don't even know. Were you going blind? When you had your kid? When you had Callie? Um, you mean in the sense of like actually starting to lose vision? Yeah. No, nah, no, I still drove and everything. Yeah, it's fine. So what about oh, so you were a dad already and then lost your sight. Yeah. So that's yeah. even scarier to me. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like what I guess. what was going on? Yeah, I never your had head? to do the I never had to do the baby stuff. You know what I mean? The baby baby stuff as a blind person, so So what, he was like two or three would be, years old? He was like uh, four, right around there, four or five ish. And did he like understand? He, he only knows me like I probably really remembers me as a blind person. Like, did he fully understand what was going on? Got dogs fighting. Um, dog. no, not really. He's just young, you know. He didn't really. He doesn't. Your kids don't care who you are. They don't know anything else. That's all they know. You know what I mean? So he doesn't know that is normal to him. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's um. Yeah, but I'm like I didn't have to do the baby changing the diapers and stuff. Well, not yet, at least. Um, yeah, because that could happen again for you. <clears throat> yeah, I'll have kids eventually one day. It's Heather, you know, we keep pushing it off, but it's gonna. Happen. But think about that—a a, a exploded diaper, dude. Cleaning that up. Like, yeah, are you? <laughs> does that give you some fear? Like, the, it's hard enough trying to clean a... countertops, dude. Uh, let alone a <laughs> diaper filled with crap. We'll clean a whole counter and then miss the most crucial spots. Uh-huh. It's like... <laughs> It's going to take giving them a bath every time, dude. Like, does that worry you? Like, <clears throat> like that that almost scares me a little. Just 
being home alone with my baby, like a newborn, you know. <laughs> yeah, I had that a little bit. Of, but, I mean, you have that as a parent no matter what. Like, when I had that as my first time with him alone, you know what I mean? It was, like, scary. Oh, man. Um, so there's nerves there either way. But, I mean, specifically to the blind thing, I don't know. I never really, I never really thought about it. Um, I was always proud of you know, by the time he got older, I was proud to be blind and, you know, a skateboarder and all that stuff. So I never really had any, like, negative or, like, self-conscious thoughts about it, really. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, were there any tools you kind of developed, though, like, once you went blind to... A leather belt. <laughs> no, I'm just I don't hit my kids. No. <laughs> 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 no, you, maybe you, 30 years ago that definitely would fly. i mean i'm a strict person as it is and then i'm very strict with, i was very strict with him as a kid as far as like staying close to me always walk in front of me never behind me so kind of conditioned him in those ways yeah exactly keep him keeping him close so i can so i have an ear on him and now he know you know he's 13 years old now so he's like you know He's my little helper now. Dude, hey, go, can you go grab that for me? Just got to teach him how to cook, though. <laughs> he's getting there. He made eggs for the first time for me this past he's, summer. So. He's the best. Yeah. Not a big, he's not a very kid. independent person yet. His mom coddles him a bunch. So. Yeah, coddling can... He's a little mama's boy, yeah, which I was, too. I was mama's boy, youngest of five. So I'm I'm the, the stern hand, I guess, the other half. Yeah, you're the strict one. Yeah. But she hasn't butt. We haven't butted heads quite yet. But I'm sure he's getting there. He but now I know. I, I give him a lot of free. I give him a lot of freedom because I was raised with a lot of freedom. I'm just kind of like do whatever you know what I mean. My mom never cared if I like dyed my hair or whatever I wore. You know what I mean? Yeah. I wore a robe to school one time, <laughs> and they called. Oh man! I, you the don't... school called because they were concerned. My mom's like, "Wait, he's wearing a robe like with." I don't know what it, like. At least it wasn't a trench coat. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, he's fine. Like, sure. So what? So she was always chill. So I try to be like that in as many ways as I can to let him like express himself. Well, I try to really push him to be independent. Is the big thing because he he has like every, I can tell he has everything done for him at his mom's house. So I really try to push for him to like do everything on his own. You know what I mean? Yeah, I was really lucky about that. My mom, <laughs> she was she was the best in in the terms of. Letting me fly, like trying to figure stuff out, and like mm -hmm. she really let me express myself in different ways because I was, I was so different than any of my other siblings at some points, man. Like being the youngest of five <clears throat> in this like beach town, everyone's kind of similar, you know. But me, Shout I like Spring Lake. I I grew up Phil in. I grew up going to school in Philly and like lived in an apartment in Philly with my mom during the week for like two That's years. That's why I always say Philly, dude. That is, that makes sense. Mm. Dan thought I lived in Philly for the longest time, mm. but that alone got me out of that area to where I learned so much more like different yeah. styles and cool. Like it's good. a city, you know? So I was wearing like all these different things. Like I was into rappers at the time and like mm. everyone's wearing just like skinny jeans and like skate clothes, you know? And I'm just, out there wearing like baggy pants and like just ch like i remember one point <laughs> i went to, <laughs> we went to the store i think it was like marshall's or something I don't, I don't even remember but it was a kid and they had those like oh no it was canal street in new york city we went and i bought the like i was probably seven years old i bought the um the big fake pendants that like spin, like they were the spinners oh, and stuff, fake, dude. Yeah, yeah. And oh um, my god, you were in. Yo, I was in. I was wearing like the the NY hat, like the flat brims, and like oh, it was, I had so many. I I was so what is Canary Street? Is that like a Canal Street? Canal? So it's like Chinatown in New York City, and it they have they have all the different. Uh, they sell all like bootleg stuff. Like you can get like the fake like. Uh, Movado watches oh, and like Rolex, okay. and they, all that okay. stuff, and like yeah, yeah. everything. You know, the, you got people Boot pushing their CDs, and yeah, exactly. Folkly glasses, yeah, the Folklies, the Gucci, just the one letter off. Dude, that, and all that. Yeah. Going to the city was, I've going to the city was fun as a kid, man. Have you ever been to New York City? Yeah, I've been a couple times. Yeah, you're not a city guy. No, nope. I like it a little more rural. City is an experience. I need I, some woods, dude. 
I see. I feel that, but you gotta expand and go into the city. But knowing you see, knowing I could leave is my favorite part. I think because yeah. it's so crazy and the stimulation. Like I lived in New York City, or uh, me and Kelly were in Harlem for a little bit, and then I moved to her with uh, with her to Brooklyn, mm-hmm. and it was like talk about stimulation you know like especially as a blind person you're constantly alert on alert and when you one time figuring it out like so we map things out to make you know find out our surroundings and everything Mm -hmm. and the first time i moved there i wanted to be like independent you know i'm just uh, because i'm in the city i I know how to travel around i'm i know how to use my cane and stuff so i started walking around i go to, to the store like maybe three blocks away and i mapped out my spot you know and i'm just like all right, whatever. And it's such a new area, so I know nothing. And then I finally try and go back to the apartment, and I got lost, dude. I, like, <laughs> I literally couldn't find my street at all. Like, I started asking people, and they started telling me where the street was, but I was like, this doesn't feel right. Like, this isn't my street. And then I, like, mm-hmm. I got lost, like, a half a mile. Like, I ended up getting <laughs> a half a mile away and, like, had to call Kelly and, like, send her my location and, like, figure it out. And she, like... Sending ex- a location? Yeah, I've had to do that. Explained how to get... The- it was... It was a scary feeling being in New York alone and not knowing where the hell I was. It's, oh, man. <laughs> that, to break out of the hole. Oh, that, that was a freaking... I'm trying to think when I... Uh, I've definitely been lost like that. I've had to set my location, but I can't think of something. Specific. It's like so easy to get so freaked get, out too and like you get turned around in this house sometimes yeah. you know what I mean? Dude, sometimes it's house, happened to me yeah you've gotten lost in a hallway and been like Wait, what hallway <laughs> just because you feel like you forgot for a second which way you were facing and then you're completely thrown off you have to like unless you know like every room in the house you know what i mean you got when you show a blind person you got to show them like every room even if, even if they're not going to go in that room exactly so that if they when they get turned around because you're going to get turned around at some point that when they feel that, they know what that is. <clears throat> and then you have reference. So if you don't know that in a new environment, like finding a hotel room for the first time is always a pain. But like, dude, yeah, you need that mental map. You it's d- so easy just to like take one wrong turn and then everything feels new. And then you then you just go into O&M freaking <laughs> panic. Dude, you, yeah, it's so easy to get panic mode. And that's the worst where you start like your nerves start going. And you're like, am I going to get out of here? Like you start freaking breathing heavier and stuff. Yeah. But that's when you have to slow down and be like, okay, what familiar landmarks do I have around and get like clues and then really take it slow. You got to not, the big thing is right when you think, wait, am I lost? Don't start turning in circles. <laughs> like literally don't turn your shoulders. Like, wait, stop and think about, cause then once you turn a little bit and you just get further and further off, dude. It's crazy. how like, those are the types of things I think people miss that kind of, we have to deal with on a regular basis is that stuff really can get just so annoying man mm-hmm. but it's just you gotta push through it keep pushing uh, what else dude what else? that's enough yeah. blindness dude blindness but um yeah we filmed one more video today I dressed Dan in some tie dye tie dye I'm not I'm not um uh what's the word I'm not shy to tie dye I'm not uh what is the word I'm looking for I'm not opposed to. I rock it all the time. You know what I mean? I wear the tie dye, dude. <laughs> tie dye, man. I don't Especially know, back dude. in the day. I this guy is strictly bones tea. <sighs> bones why, tea, you know jeans, why, and booze nips. You know why I wear bones tea? And first off, I'm not strictly bones tea. You guys only know me from my Instagram in the from previously. <laughs> and why do I wear bones tea? Because that's the sponsor, dude. Shout out. It's called incentive. <laughs> it's called photo incentive. That's why you know Ms. Bones, dude. We'll go to a fancy dinner. I'll get all dressed up for you, dude. Get on the three-piece suit. Suit is a rare thing. Only weddings. I didn't even wear a suit for my wedding. You wore boots. I, I wore, wore the, today. And the jeans you put on. Doc Martin. I wore That's those jeans. That's what you were wearing? Those jeans and then a um, a white long sleeve like button up, you know. Like, you wore just, jeans, bro? Kid Rock over no, here. No, they don't look like jeans, though. No one could tell I was wearing jeans. Not oh, many people. Oh, they look like yeah, they're fabric. like yeah, they're just nice black jeans, stretchy. you know, stretchy material. And stretchy I wore a white pants. dinner coat though. That was my thing. And I had a, I had a purple. Like, you wore white? Yes. I thought only the bride bride's supposed to wear. No, that. dude, I went white. And then I wore a purple bow tie. <laughs> purple bow tie, baby. Bow ties are my go-to, actually. Can you tie a bow tie? 
no, my brother had to tie it for yeah, me. I and tie. he was messing up, and then there was like other people were trying to come in. Heather can put tie one. Yeah, with the YouTube video. T- tying a bow tie YouTube is video. not easy. It's really hard. Yeah, they were looking up YouTube videos. Like the, it's the morning of my wedding. I still haven't got my bow tie tied. I'm like at the property where I'm getting married. Wedding's in like ten minutes. I'm still trying to get mm-hmm. it tied. I'm like freaking out. Can you tie a regular tie? Yeah. Single I Windsor? Have... You got the double Windsor now? It was double. I double don't know. I, I used to have to wear it. I went to Catholic high school and I had to wear a tie every day. Uh, so I had to learn how to tie it. That was a real You just pain. had the white shirt, black tie, and what? Shorts or pants? I would rock the shorts, but then we had pants too. I'd rock pants sometimes when it was cold. Black shoes or and something? And if you were a senior, so you got to wear the polos in the spring and the, uh, what is it, like beginning, so fall. The seniors got yeah. to but the seniors can have them all year round. So it was like, you were cool if you got the polo all I year. Wouldn't, I couldn't handle that as a kid. <laughs> I could barely get deal with the restrictions in a regular public school, dude. Dude, I used to have to, I remember going to school, high school, and I would go there with like the little bit of, of peach fuzz, and they would make me shave in the office. Really? Yeah, oh, they would make me shave wow. in the office, and there were so many times I cut my face with those little cheap razors. Oh, look, yeah. oh those little throwaways. Jeez. When did you get the gold, the diamond earrings, dude? <laughs> Freshman year, dude. Oh, I, I I went I was in uh I went to school with a bunch of people that were from North Jersey and stuff, like people that moved from like Staten Island and stuff, and. You know, a bunch of guidos. Yeah. <laughs> I, had like, I used to think it looked so sick when I was a kid. The, I had the diamond studs, and I had spiked my hair. <laughs> my dad was like, what are you doing, dude? Oh, man, you're going in deep to Jersey. Yeah. yeah and you had the, didn't you say you had, like, black diamonds in there? Yeah, I had the black. I had all different ones, dude. I had blue ones. I had the <laughs> whole array of di- earrings. Wow. I thought it was so cool. I would go to, uh, what is it, Kohl's or whatever, and get mm-hmm, the earrings. Same thing, yeah. The worst I got, I had some dog tags that were like, had a little... Oh, you had the dog tags. With my name, I think. I don't even know what I had on there. And then like, I etched around the edge were like fake diamonds. <laughs> like, the fake diamonds. Two of them hanging from the, the neck. With your long... Did you have long hair at that point? Yeah, long hair. Oh, man. That was like senior year, I think. You didn't bleach your hair blonde like Eminem, dude? I did that, well, I mean, in middle school, yeah. I did that once, but my hair turned orange. I had it... I dyed my hair bright blue. <laughs> like bright blue. Oh, Saw it in the man. snowboard man. I was like, that is sick. <laughs> and I did it. Did but then see I how went, much influence things have on you? Like I went just... swimming for like ten minutes like a couple times and I just turned into just like that bleach, you know. I bleached my hair a bunch. I uh I only bleached my hair one time. I was in it was like sophomore year of high school or something. Is and that whole, why it's so thin? <laughs> the whole wrestling team bleached their hair. So I, I was like not going to do it. And then I finally just gave in and did it. And my hair did not go blonde <laughs> at all. It was seriously bright orange. It's you did the orange. <laughs> it was yeah. disgusting. It didn't go long enough. No. You didn't leave it in there long enough. No, you? I guess not. But my hair it. is dark. You should it bleach was... it now with a long bleach and <laughs> full set of hair. That would be <laughs> sick, dude. Oh, man. I always said... Uh, I think if I win the Olympics, I'll I'll dread my hair and then cut it all off in like a couple of weeks. Dread it. I'm going to dread it. I dread that. You probably get dreads and you got to comb out, huh? Do they ever start forming in yours? Is that curly? Sometimes I get so frustrated in the shower when I'm trying to like brush my hair out because it's been tied up for so long because of just training and everything. Yeah, yeah. I'll have these knots and dreadlocks and I just start ripping. Like yeah, it, it sucks. I can't do anything else. It just bothers me. I remember those days. One time I was in the shower and I started ripping out all my all my hair. <laughs> and I was like I was upset about something. Too. It was just like mm-hmm. a bad morning and I started like I had these terrible dreads. I just wanted to get them out and then I started ripping out these like clumps of my hair. And I'm like, oh no, dude, I think my hair is like a bald, like all these spots and like I ruined my <laughs> hair and I started like crying even more to like Kelly and I'm like Everything freaking out. out. It was so bad. I had all these hairs around the shower, like just these <laughs> clumps. <laughs> so stressed out and just. Looks like you're going through chemo or oh, something. Oh, that was a dude. bad Jeez. morning. It was a bad morning. Was that the brush one? The br- Yes. Oh, that was the other thing. 
forgot I was using a dog brush instead of a human <laughs> brush. By ass. I grabbed the I yes. grabbed the brush and it feels like very similar to the wet brush. Yeah, and it was yeah. a dog brush with like the metal bristles and it was like super clawing close. at my hair, oh, my, my hair ears. scalp, dude. I'm in pain and I'm like, what is wrong with me? Literally ripping. And your then hair. Kelly comes and she's like, oh no, she's like, that's you a dog can't. brush. It was Lord, such. <laughs> That's like Eric Weinmayer. I heard him say one time at, when he spoke, he's like, <laughs> yeah, you know, when you're blind, sometimes you mistake the, the icy hot for toothpaste. It's, mm, it's I'm natural. just gonna ask you, you ever? Uh, yeah, we piss on your, we piss on the side of urinals, is what we do. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> urinals are the worst, dude. You gotta touch them, and it's nice. <laughs> I know. Give you a little touch, dude. Yeah, you go. Oh. You ever peed next to a urinal on accident? <laughs> no. I don't think I've ever really done that. I've come close to. <laughs> One time. <laughs> on the first date with Kelly, like in the city, <laughs> we're there. Whoa. Uh, damn. The washer's going. It's all right. It's all right. Sorry. One time we're there with... Uh, I'm there on my first date with Kelly in the city, like one of the first dates, and we go to like a cafe... And I have to go to the bathroom. And I'm like, number one or number two? Number one. So I just have to pee. <laughs> no, and I, no. I go to the... I go, I, she, like, helps me go to the... Like, find What'd the you door. Order? What? You remember what you ordered? I got a yeah. flatbread sandwich. You remember what she had? We... Sh- I think we shared Kinda a flatbread. Shared. And then got, like, a, a This was your first date? No, it was just... It, we stopped in here. We were, like, going all around the city, like, having a day. Like, having a great day. Okay. And one of our first dates, though, yeah. Mm-hmm. And she's uh, she brings me to the bathroom, and I'm I go in the bathroom, I'm McCain, and I start feeling around. I'm, dude, I was like lost in the bathroom, and like normally we have a system now where she'll like peek in when she opens the door to the bathroom, and just be like yeah, blah 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 is on the so I don't have to like feel around everywhere. Yeah, she was like showing me the whole bathroom when we went yesterday. I was like, I'm good. <laughs> dude, get the hell out of here. <laughs> but no, I've literally had times where. This was like one of those moments, and I, I think I like wash my hands, and then uh, I'm looking for the garbage because I, yeah, I, uh, I had the paper the towels, and I can't find the garbage anywhere, so I ended up just like throwing my, but like paper towels somewhere, and it was just, <laughs> Kelly was like, "Is everything all right?" Like and I was like, "Oh yeah, I'm good," and just walked out, but I was fine. If you can't find it, it's a good chance it's a hole in the on top of the sink, in between oh, the yeah, two sinks. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes there's one like that. They, that's funny too. I've definitely that done that, that move though, where I just I'm done looking for this bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> that's so dumb. Yeah. Feel bad, but I know, I, I know I can't do this. I can't. I can't keep feeling around a bathroom like a public mm-hmm. restroom with my. <laughs> Sometimes I have it outside of the door too. It's a really random one. It's funny you say that though about the. It should sometimes in the middle of the sinks because that makes you think about how so many things are actually in similar places throughout no matter where you go. Like, mm-hmm. things are set up pretty standard. The so other you kind of memorize all these things. The other one with hotels that threw me off in the beginning was some people put the towels in the shower on a rack, but they're inside the shower, like up above your head. You know That I mean? one really throws me off because yeah, I, I end up getting them wet too or something. It's just... Oh, in the... Ho- I have looked for those for hours. Mm-hmm. Looking for a towel? Uh, yeah, I've called the desk before. <laughs> Sometimes you, sometimes yeah, you just have somebody come with you or whatever. Oh man, hotels! I've stayed in a lot of those. Lots of hotels. Do you ever been a hotel traveling. that didn't have braille or anything? Yeah, in uh, Japan, actually, yeah. in Tokyo, there was no braille. I had to feel the numbers. That's surprising because Tokyo has those. Like on the sidewalk, there's like a raised line that you can follow. Yeah, no, they're very advanced. Going to the advanced. subway and stuff, it's crazy. The, it's like a grid of like on the streets that's raised, so you can just literally follow that line, and it'll take you. Then there's like braille labels everywhere. Yeah, they have sick. those through the like the train stations in Germany and stuff too. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. That was that really, uh, I really liked that when I was. Did we in talk Germany. about that? I don't know. If we did. No, we didn't. We did not. But yeah, that is that's what we need. That should be everywhere because I think so much everything. So much it's a easy. grid, and then you like can it breaks off in different parts, so there's like different routes you could take. Yeah, it'll go, it'll go like and, a four way intersection, and, and your it. cane fits right in this groove. So yeah, like, sick. it's just. Like, I remember I was leading. I was like, "No, I'll lead us." When we were in Germany, and like mm-hmm. I led me and Kelly through the train station, like running through it, like with so much confidence. Mm-hmm. 
I did that in Japan in like the big square. I was with my buddy Paul. We were leaving the bar at the end of the night and just, he's like, yeah, just walk straight, mate. And it's just packed. Like you just hear, I mean, million, literally probably like a million people. And I just start, it's just then I just slowly start jogging and then I just start running, <laughs> just, just going full speed ahead. And Paul's just behind me laughing. He's like, everyone's just spreading oh as you come to it was like Moses spreading the yeah, sea. No, that's what me and Kelly say. Part the Red Seas. Mm. There's been people in New York City that will like, you'll be walking with your cane and you're with people like, jump, dude. They <laughs> jump. I've had, <clears throat> I've had guys pull their girls out of the way, like yeah. literally just pull, and like they're not even in the way. That's the best part. Yeah. They don't. Know, they think you're gonna just gonna veer off. Cars do that too. <laughs> you'd be on the sidewalk and they like start slowing down. Like, yeah, I'm good, dude. Go ahead. I'm not just gonna jump out in the middle of the street out of nowhere. I, I hear you, bro. I'm not going to jump. not going to make any uh, sporadic movements. <laughs> no, I'm, t- I'm keeping my hands and feet on the sidewalk all the time. <laughs> so weird. I love having another blind person around, though, and just messing with their cane, dude. <laughs> mess with- Dad mess came with- up to me and I he was like... I with Justin so much. Do you really? He was, like, checking in the hotel, and I was, like, knocking his cane, like, thinking he was at the desk, <laughs> and he... Like, what, what? Everyone's like, dude... I'm like no, dude, it's normal. It yeah, dude, that's how do we you, mess with each other. You mess with your friends? Uh, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> what are you talking about? It's because he's blind as man a day. That's funny, man. I didn't think that. That is great. <laughs> you about to talk about the mouse trap? Oh, Dan. <laughs> that's how good I am, though. Dan, you quick. Came, Dan came up to me. He's like, Anthony, I need help with this, and he hands me a, a contraption, which was a mouse trap <laughs> that was set, <laughs> and was, that was set, and I'm like. What is this? And then I started feeling. I was like, "What is this? A mouse trap?" And he's like, "No, dude. I just need help with this. Like, I'm trying to." Manage. <laughs> Snaps right back. I scream. I was like, "What the hell?" Oh, oh man. And then uh, should I not put that on TikTok? Will they flag me for that? <laughs> they won't flag. You. No, you don't think it'll be dangerous? I don't know. Like, it's good. It's a good test. It's flag good for test. dangerous actions. Uh, don't drop. Wonder. Don't drop in on a quarter pipe. They might flag you. I know you get flagged for that. Dude. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> no, but. Another thing is the adapted park here has been sick, dude. Yeah, it's, it's, dude. You're the first or the second, I should say. The only other blind person to uh, skate that thing, man. The Legend, the quarter pipe. Not much of a park yet, but... It's it's definitely a playground, I'd call it. I'm about to shred it after you guys leave, I think. I know, I'm a little jealous. Nice out right now. It's That thing is sick. It's a 30-foot long ledge and a 30-foot mm-hmm. long quarter pipe, so you can just go without having to worry about going off the side or... Running on a ledge yeah. and all that stuff. It's really nice. It's nice for setup time, and because when when you can't see, the setups take a lot longer. It's been a. Uh, it's been good, man. I've learned. I mean, new so many new tricks on it, dude. So it's helped me a bunch. So it's got to help everyone else once we start getting. Do you ever prop it up to make it a little higher? It is propped up. Oh, it is right now. I wish it was higher. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> it's the only thing. I should have did a little more research. Oh, that's what it propped up. It's on two. It's on one. Like a, it's Cinder- an extra inch. It's a, okay, Cinder- it's yeah. a brick, yeah, a paving stone. Yeah, we could probably um, skate thicker ones. I mean, I have a million of them, but I'm not just gonna prop. It's uh, yeah, gonna get started. That would be bad. It's gonna start getting uh, a little un, un, um, secure or whatever. But. Yeah, it's sketchy. But we need more. Yeah, the goal is to get the building up, and we gotta lay. Concrete. Yeah, what is your vision? Like the full vision of it. I have a whole plan and everything. Yeah, keypushing.com. Um. It's a non-profit I have to build an adaptive skate park and then bring um, visually impaired and blind kids out. Pretty, much, I think I'm gonna start with like bringing a couple kids out and like stay an extended weekend. Oh, that's skate, really cool. Hook them up with like, you know, a real board, Adidas shoes, and all that stuff, and then start building kind of events around that and just get as many blind people there. But I mean, the ledge is actually gonna be longer than that. I think it's gonna be a 50 foot ledge. I think right now it'll be 50 by 100 feet, 5,000 square feet um, building, and then a uh, quarter pipe on whole one wall, one end, and then a ledge on like half, almost the entire wall of the other one, a little forest air. Oh, nice. Um, and then these like three rollers in a row, just like waves pretty much, mm-hmm. with a wall on each side. Oh, I've, I've ridden one of those. Those are really cool. They called it a blind corner. Blind corner? Yeah. I have what? a video of it. The the rollers, like it kind of rolls. Is it like a pump track kind of? 
Yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. It'll be like four rows in it. This will be pretty close though. Okay. Sim- yeah, pretty much a pump track, a, like a a shorter, smaller pump right, track. Right, right. You know. Um. Yeah, and then a, and a super long flat bar too. Oh, that's like just nice. pretty basic little mani pad. Handrail on the stair. Yeah, removable rail. Run it to be as wide open as possible. I like that. So idea. everything will be removable and like movable. Mm-hmm. So uh, super wide stairs. So the stairs will just be like you know the whole length of the park or width of the park. Oh, that's so, so nice. A lot of room. Yeah. Um, then you can put in like a out wedge on there. Put in a you can move hubba. A hubba. And then I mean I think I do. There should be a mini ramp, you know. There's gonna be a mini ramp. Yeah. No, that's a, that's on the floor plan. Yeah, something. No, it's it's, it's on. Not the first one, but. No, it is. <laughs> 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 but yeah, I mean, the, right now it's just getting the, figuring out all of the, raising the money. It's a big thing, and then figuring out all the zoning and stuff because it's a pain. Yeah, getting there. And help. then the insurance and stuff. Mm-hmm. That's a really cool. I didn't know the whole vision was that because it it's sick enough as it is. That's like how I feel about. It. Like yeah. I, when I got here, I was so stoked. I was like, no way, this is how it is. And I'll have speakers too. Speakers and the and the obstacles will be a dark color and the ground will be a light color. For oh, that's vision. nice, yeah. And then speakers specifically put on each obstacle in the right places. Mm-hmm. And then I'll have like a board where I can just turn on the quarter pipe or turn on the ledge or turn on the mani pad or whatever. You know what I mean? That's really nice. And it'll just oh, be... Oh, like so it lights up? What do you mm-hmm. mean a board? A, just a switch to turn on the speakers for individual Oh, a speaker. Oh, the speaker. Okay, that's nice. And then nice. The, the other day, it would be to have lights along an edge of, like, a coping of a quarter pipe. Or oh, that's the, interesting. The edge of the ledge. But yeah, imagine, like, a glowing coping. Yeah, I'm sick. That'd be really Could cool. definitely do it. This part's going to be sick. They have, uh, uh, you can put lights within, like, cement and stuff like that. Mm. I know they have that, so... Just depends on how much money we get, you know. It's gonna turn into like a disco skate. Be sick, and Michael Jackson. <laughs> it's Michael Jackson skate. Sick, but yeah, that's the goal, dude. Speaking so hopefully, when you come soon, eventually we'll have the building, so we can work all year round. But um, yeah, man, shredding broski. Shredding. I know I'm gonna miss you, dude. Yeah, I know it's been we. I'm exhausted, dude. I, so be yeah. I was burnt yesterday. I was like, oh yeah, I'm done. A couple of days off. A couple of days off. I think I got like one day off, and then right back at it on Friday. Yeah, same. I got the demo and stuff this weekend too. Demo. Demo. What not, are those like for you when you're skating weekend. with a bunch of people? I don't have a demo this weekend. This will be released later. Than the demo. Have you done those before? Yeah. yeah. So what's it like when like have you done skate jams where it's anyone can come skate? That's what this will be an open demo, yeah. So anyone can shred. It's mad. Is that overwhelming? It's gotta be. Dude. Yeah, it's like not fun at all. <laughs> at all. It's not fun. <laughs> not fun it's at not, all. It's not skateboarding. It's just crazy. What do you do? Do you just pick a ledge or something to yeah, stay I'll just by? Take over an obstacle and just take it over and whatever. It's gotta oh, just it's... like because I start really close to the obstacle, so I just start there and people just get the picture. That is so. Overwhelming. But then it's still you're just on alert, listening for boards coming and. Little groms flying by you, because people at the demos are like, the little kids are like trying to show off for like everybody else, you know. What I yeah, mean? Especially, especially the like, little shredders. Like the, you know, they'll be like Dennis Boozness there, and all the kids are trying to show off, and you know what I mean. Oh man! So they just go ham, dudes, and they get a little careless sometimes, and they'll be flying all over the place. But it's cool. It's hype. It's good energy. You know what I mean? It's fun. For it's probably else yeah. Everyone else, it's probably sick. Oh, yeah, I mean. <clears throat> Yeah, it's not like very fun for all most some of the dudes. But it's probably cool to because it's not like you know. It's skating. probably a better socializing aspect, like after the fact, almost. Yeah, even. it is cool. Dude, everyone likes it. It's it, it is a better. It is more relaxing than it, when it's just just you skating. You know what I mean? Just yeah. like the team, because then like all the eyes are on you, which is weird. What's that like? Yeah. So what's what are the different styles? So the skate jam is like anyone can come. Just yeah, skate open with where you guys. the public can skate, and then, or they have it just closed where it's just the team skating. You know what I mean? So what's and that? Dudes are just going ham. Oh man, just fucking shit up, dude. Do you go like as hard as you can on the ledges and shit? Yeah, you know you gotta like you gotta pace yourself because you'll get burnt out. Um, you gotta like yeah, don't don't do your number one hammer trick right off the bat. Do you, people you start like gathering around you and stuff ever? I don't know. Everyone just everyone just on along the edges. Yeah, I don't 
like do people yell and stuff? I'm trying to understand yeah, what everyone's, it's like. Yeah, everyone's screaming. Like describe the scene loud. to me. Yeah, it's just it's like being at a skate park with hundreds of people. <laughs> <laughs> so it's if you're it's an indoor park, it's like just echoes. I can't do that. Super loud, indoor, echoey. Yeah. And then I'm just focused on my one little obstacle, and then if I hear a board coming, you know, I just like brace myself. Um, Have you ever been hit pretty bad? Yeah, I was skating. Uh, we were just at a sorry, we were just at this random park. <clears throat> and I was in the bowl, and the top of the bowl there's like a mini bowl up top, a little like small like mini ramp in there. Right. And this dude was like, "You mind if I skate this?" I'm like, "Yeah, that's chill." And I was just like rolling in the bowl and like trying to get high in the wall. Mm-hmm. And uh, his board came and just, just hit me right in the tent, the Achilles tent, and just smoked me. Ooh. And I'm just like, not trying not to just flip out on this kid. I'm like, dude. Just threw his board back and just left. He's like, oh. an idiot, dude. He's like, sorry, man. Sorry. Oh, sorry. sorry. It's like, dude, what are you doing? You really had to come in here and skate this thing? <laughs> come on, man. Yeah, like, you see a dude with a cane But I never been. It's my teammates who usually run into me. Silas is always running into me. <laughs> it's like, dude, I know it's you, isn't it? It's like, sorry, Dan. <laughs> sorry, He's Dan. like super ADD, just all over the place, going a million miles an hour. Oh, man. I feel like I'm missing the way, dude. That's how I feel. Dudes are shredders. I hate that feeling at the skate park. Mm-hmm. It's it gets, I don't know. We kind of like, it makes I've me feel really it's, shitty. I've learned it's just a that's just a self conscious thing. You know what I mean? No, I mean, it is. But th- cool. that feeling is inevitable. Sometimes it's like I was at yeah. the skate park a couple weeks ago. There's a bunch of people there. And it's a skate park where it's set up <clears throat> that it's kind of set up to flow through the whole park. Mm-hmm. And there's like a really long ledge on one side which I was trying to skate but then there's still people flying by you right behind you yeah, going through the park and you just feel like you're in the way every time so yeah. like you want to stop and just stay on the side so they can get by and then you're trying to hit your trick and then back to it and it's like it, it's so fast paced and it's so overwhelming and there's so many things happening there's so many people and you just feel like you were getting stoked on landing tricks off this ledge and then you hear people doing these huge errors in the bowl and like riding through the park hitting ledges at the same time it's like that really gets me sometimes it's just mm. it's hard yeah the overwhelming over like sensory overload you get dumb numb to that after a while for sure it, but, but for me that, it's more than the sense it's like that emotion of just feeling bel- not belittled but like oh you just want to be able to shred like everybody just want to yeah. shred like I just want to <laughs> yeah. see the park and I just want to just want to be able to flow and go faster. Yeah, that's the one thing I miss. Is it sounds like dude. those lines, like people set up these crazy lines and just hit all these tricks. I miss just pushing down the street in like a city where you're just weaving it out of people. That's the best. Yeah, see, I, I hear that all these the videos best. of street skaters in New York City. They'll like oh, hit a so gnarly fun. trick off something and then they're weaving through traffic to finish it. <laughs> Look at you bombing some hills, dude. I I bombed a hill one time. You get you an SF at two in the it's morning. One of my goals. Two in the morning, we're at my house, me, my buddy, and Kelly, and my buddy's like real crazy. Shout out to Castro. And Castro, what up, Castro? Castro. And he's uh, Fidel Castro. He's the man, dude. And he t- he was like, dude, let's go bomb some hills. And we set up like we had these two long boards. We had uh, a rope, that, like a string. Control the mic like Fidel Castro. Sorry, yeah. Long <laughs> string. We, we had the string, and we tied it like we to just held on to it. No, 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 we just held on Ooh, to it. Ooh, dangerous it, move, Very dude. dangerous. He's going to drop and it. And this is a very steep hill. Like, so steep that we started halfway down, and you're still almost on a vertical. Like, it's mm. very bad. and Very good. <laughs> no, this was... Dude, I started going down this hill. I couldn't see a thing. It's pitch black. I just, at one point, I'm going so fast. I'm getting the speed wobbles. And I, for some reason in my head, I was like, I should just jump off. Like, mm. I should jump mm. off. And then split second later, my conscience is like, dude, you're not allowed to jump off. You cannot jump off. You yeah, have right. to commit to this hill or you to... will die. And I just literally stayed on my board and kept going. You and... recovered from the wobbles? No, I was wobbling the whole time. It was that sketchy. 
Like my board was usually, shaking. Usually you can't you get the speed well. Usually that gets worse and worse and you just eat shit. No, so finally I got to the bottom of the hill and then it goes up another hill. So it like slowed me down yeah, and sketchy. it was so sketchy, dude, because I didn't even know what was Dude, I, those wobbles. Like dude. stupid me didn't even check out like the other side to know what was going to happen. Like if once I got down this hill and then I kind of hung Did up. Did I tell uh, the bottom of the hill in Santa Monica on a no. bad episode? Yeah. On a that ba- one got wasted? Yeah. I did a really similar thing. Uh, I was on a longboard though; had these big wheels, and I, in Santa Monica, going it leads the hill that leads right into um, the Santa Monica Pier. It's like the ones like the Dogtown dudes mm-hmm. shoot, like bomb and all that. Yeah, I love those. But I was like, oh, sick! Again, I'm at the top, it's like dark, so I, I have a little bit less vision, you know. Mm-hmm. But I was still like, you know, good sight. But I bomb, and I get to the bottom of the hill, and I'm getting closer, and I see that the boardwalk comes up. It goes from oh, the no. cement to the boardwalk. I'm like, oh my god, I might oh, no. die right now. So I just put myself like all the way to the back of this like loaded longboard, and just went. Oh. Just came to a stop. I was like, oh my god. I didn't know if I was gonna fly off or not. That dude. feeling is so scary. It was dude. It's, it's literally facing death, like potentially. You know? Yeah. Dude. Sketch. I had a similar thing when I was I climbed to my buddy's roof. His parents' house. This was like when I was really young, and uh, it had just snowed and like, um, it like snowed and then maybe rained a bit and then it got cold. So there's like a air, a layer of ice over the top of the snow on the roof. Right. And it was right when you drive up the driveway, you like you see the face of this roof. So I was going, I was pounding in letters into the like the ice so it would break it, and then I was spelling out penis. <laughs> And I'm like, I'm like working out like the P and I'm going to the E and then I start sliding down the roof, dude. And it was that feeling of, yeah, like of not having control and then like getting close to the edge and just slide <laughs> coming off of the ledge. Oh, and I no. had like these big snowboard boots. I just, they were just snowboard boots, but I just landed on my feet like a cat and then just like stood up and was like, oh dude, I'm fine. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> but like... I didn't know if I was going to break my legs. Dude, I haven't really fallen from something that tall before. <laughs> but lucky I had those big boots that just took all the shock. Dude. Oh, man, dude. So there was like a P and an E up there, and I was like, all right. <laughs> I'm not going back up, dude. Have you ever so fallen stupid. blind and not knowing what you're falling into? And like you just think you're something really bad's about to happen? The river. I think I told you to tell that one. Dude, I, I, was, I was in New Orleans with Kelly, and we're scootering. <laughs> Shit. Scooter gang. And oh, we were, wait, the bird scooters are like. Uh, no, no, like razor scooters, oh. dude. They have razors, oh, and we we're scootering along the Mississippi River, right? Mm-hmm. And it's like a fifty foot drop off, but it's really far away into the river, mm-hmm. and the river has a really strong current. Yeah, it's Mississippi. Yeah, it's, it, <laughs> it, it, it was really strong, and I, uh, I'm riding on this this path. With the scooter, and Kelly's like GoProing behind me on the scooter, <laughs> telling you left, right, and telling me left and right, and then all of a sudden I accidentally like she's like left, left, and I accidentally stayed right, and I went over the side like the curb of <laughs> of the trail, yeah, and you thought wh- you were while going I'm down. going head over my scooter, I thought I was falling into the river. Oh. <laughs> No, literally in air, dude. I thought I was falling into the river. Did you just put your hands on like a dive? I, like a no, I literally like I curled up like in a ball, like cannonball like style, dude. Like cannonball. Yeah, like cannonball. And I thought like I had no idea what was about to happen. And I thought I was gonna fall into the river. All these thoughts went in my head as I was in the air into the river, gonna get dragged by the current. And I'm not gonna be able to get out, and it's too high. the The ledge is too high up, so I will never be able to reach to get out of the river. I'm just a goner. Like, and then finally I hit, I fall on these like fluffy grass, dude. <laughs> and the, Kelly's the, just laughing the, in the, fa- back. the thing, the look on my face was just so, it was too much. I was just so relieved. I was like, it was the, I was like so happy to fall. Like, so you know, like you, like, you, you, you she's are, like, are you okay? I was like, oh, I'm so good. I'm actually so good. I thought I was about to die. You literally thought you got another chance at life, right? There. Oh, it was terrifying. Absolutely <laughs> terrifying. That's a good one to end on, I think, dude. Yeah. That was funny. That was good. I think this is gonna wrap it up and Yeah, man. Great it's, weekend. Dude, it's been it's been unreal. A lot of stuff coming out. Make sure you're all tuned in with four bad eyes across the board on everything. Following with the website and just 
F O U R. F O U R, spelt out. And and uh, I'm also Dan the Mancina on all I'm, platforms. And I'm ASF Vision. Yep. And our individual accounts. That's right. Reach and, out, uh, show some love, send some questions. Yep. Unlike, unsubscribe. <laughs> Leave a bad comment. <laughs> Leave a bad review. All right, much love. Keep pushing. And one love, baby. Keep pushing. And one love from Four Bad Eyes.